again, and welcome back to part two of adding game sounds to a 2D platformer. I think that's what I'm calling it, I guess, I'm not too sure. Where last time we were adding some uh, one-shots from FMOD to uh, listen to the player hurting themselves whenever they took damage, or listening to the player swing the staff whenever the weapon was collected. Uh, today we're gonna stay with the weapons, we're actually gonna be looking at the gunshot sound. Uh, still gonna be using one-shots, but this time we're gonna be looking at some more uh, 3D sounds within the game, which will be quite interesting. Uh, but first, before we do any of that, I made an error in the last episode, which I'm quickly going to address now. Okay, so last time, if you'll recall, we added two components to the player character. If I quickly go on to Ellen and have a look at all the items attached to her, if I go to, well, actually, the first one was on the uh, character herself. If I go all the way down, we added one uh, custom uh, script component called FMOD Player. Uh, and the idea of that was to basically trigger a one shot whenever the player swang the staff. If I quickly click back on the game and do that now. That's what that would do. It would trigger a one shot uh, through the animation to play that sound. And the other uh, component we added was on the uh, listener. Here we are, audio listener. So as he was the studio, the FMOD studio listener, so that we can hear 3D sounds within the game uh, from the reference point of the player character. Uh, however, if I quickly proceed to the next level or the next scene within Unity, uh, you might notice something. If I quickly go and on our character now, let's go Ellen, let's go all the way down. Our script is missing. And if I also go to the uh, audio listener, the FMOD Studio listener is missing. If I go back on the game and try and swing my sword, I don't think it's going to work. Or the staff rubber. Yeah, there you go. So it doesn't work. If I come down to the console, I'm now getting an error saying it's missing a component. Now, the reason why this happened is because in the last episode, I added all those components to the instance of uh, our player character within the level we're on, uh, which is fine because obviously, you know, that's already loaded in. We need to add the components to it. But what we also need to do is add it to the prefab of the player character. And the reason why is whenever we enter a new scene within Unity, uh, Unity is going to destroy all of the assets. If I zoom out here, it's going to destroy all of these assets and then access new uh, instances of the assets uh, from all the folders here for the next scene, including our player character. So obviously what happened is it deleted this uh, instance of Ellen, which had all our components on, spawned in a new one, which didn't, and that caused the error to occur. So all we need to do to fix this is go to Ellen, no, not under animations. We need to go to art, uh, and I believe, maybe not even art. Okay, prefabs, here we go, then Ellen, here we go. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did last time. I'm gonna go down, add component, and I'm gonna go find the component I wanna add. Then I'm also going to open this little tab here and I'm gonna find the audio listener and I'm going to add the FMOD Studio listener. So now if we test it again, we can hear the uh, swiping of the staff in this scene and if I enter the next scene as well, uh, we should hear it again if I swing again. There we go, nice one. So that's just something we need to bear in mind uh, as we progress. If we're gonna add anything, uh, any components, we probably need to add it to the uh, prefabs of the components so that whenever we enter a new scene, uh, the game will load in the prefabs containing the correct components. Uh, cool. So let's have a look at what we're actually doing today. So like I said earlier, today we're going to be looking at the gunshot sound. Now, if you remember in the last part when we were listening to the gun sound play, we, uh, we only heard one sound play, essentially. Whenever we fired the gun, we just heard a gunshot sound. Uh, pretty plain, pretty standard, it worked, but I want to do something a little bit different. I want to add uh, two FMOD events. I want to add one for the gun sound uh, and one for the bullet as it travels, so we can kind of hear like a whiz and a zap as it kind of flies away from us. And hopefully we'll be able to hear it in the stereo field as well. We'll have the gunshot sound in the middle, and then we'll have the bullet sound travel with the bullet as it flies off either to the left or to the right side of the screen. So if we have a look at the sounds that we're provided with within the uh, game kit, we can have a listen to all the gun sounds that come with it. If I play you the third one here, you might recognize it from the last part, and that's the one that's kind of uh, the standard gunshot when you just load up uh, the game to try out in Unity. Uh, but I want to try and use all four of these sounds and kind of combine them together, and that's actually what I've uh, already done. If I go into my sound effects folder over here, and if I open up the Ellen uh, folder and click Ellen Ranged, and I play this for you, this is my kind of, well, version of that, I suppose. Uh, let's quickly just break down what I've done for you. So this is the uh, this is the sound that's going to play whenever the gunshot fires. And this is the sound that's going to be located uh, where the gun is, essentially. Uh, if I play you this first file here, 
This is the uh, ranged attack one file. If I play the second one, this is the second file. However, I've cut it a little bit short because I didn't want all of the tail end of it. I kind of like the zappy uh, beginning sound of it. So I've kind of mixed them together. Uh, and then if I play it all together, we get that. If I go to the, where is it? Ah, uh, here we go. So if I click on one of the files, I've also done a bit of pitch uh, automation or modulation rather. Uh, and if I go to the second file, I've done a bit of both pitch and volume. And as you can see, I've set the volume to uh, plus three dB, but then I've modulated to six. So the volume of this file will be anywhere between three and minus three dB, just to give it a bit of, uh, a, a bit of dynamicness, I suppose, if that's a word. Uh, cool, so let's have a look at how that sounds within the game. So on its own, the Elland ranged event that I created sounds like this. Pretty standard. Nice and boomy, so it feels like a powerful gunshot's been fired. Uh, but like I said, I kind of want to add a second event to the bullet that sort of travels as the gun is fired. So let's have a listen to that in F mod. So this is the second event. This is the bullet sound. And as you'll notice, I've uh, actually created a separate folder uh, that's not sort of attached to all the Ellen sounds. And the reason why is because the bullet is obviously uh, its own object. We're not attaching it to our player character anymore. We're attaching it to a different object. So I felt that was necessary for organizational purposes. Uh, if I quickly go back to all of our sounds and play through them again for you, let's go attacks, ranged, uh, just because obviously these are gonna sound a little bit different uh, playing in the uh, context of this event. So let me quickly go through them. We've heard one and, well, we'll play two again because we're using the second file uh, again. So if I play that. So this time, last time in the first event, I used just the beginning. This time I'm only gonna use the tail end, which you'll hear in a second. Uh, this is the uh, range attack number three. Which, like I said, this is what the game uses. I'm actually going to use this as kind of the sound of the bullet whizzing off into the distance rather than the gunshot itself. And then the last sound, I'm actually going to combine with the uh, third sound here. So let's have a listen to what I've done. Uh, so if I solo this track here for you, which I've called Launch, uh, what I've done is uh, added a multi-instrument, added the sounds three and four into them, uh, added quite a bit of pitch uh, aut modulation, not automation, uh, just so you know we can really get some... Nice uh, variation in tones there as it whizzes off. Let's have a listen to them on their own and play it a few times. There we go. Cool. So hopefully this should sound pretty different every time I play it. And I've also, as I said, combined it with the tail of the second file. There we go. So it just adds a little sparkle as it flies away. Uh, and again, I've added some more pitch uh, modulation, which as you probably noticed by now, I quite like to do. Uh, yeah, so that is pretty much it. Let's have a listen to it all together. Cool, sounds pretty cool. Uh, a few other things I've done is, uh, as you'll notice, I've added some fades. The reason why I've added the fades at the beginning is because I don't want any, uh, I don't want it to get too muddy with the other event I've got here, which is the Ellen range shot. Uh, so to prevent, uh, I guess, overlap of frequencies and, you know, the mix of the game kind of being a bit messy, because these two sounds are always going to be playing at the same time, I thought I'd just remove a bit of the attack and a bit of the initial uh, sound of these files just to give some room for the gunshot sound. And what I've also done is I've EQ'd the whole event and I've just taken a little bit of low end off because if I play this first one again for you... <laughs> It's quite low end and boomy, so we don't really want that in the uh, second uh, event for the bullet flying away, because again, that's going to clash with the first event and sound pretty muddy, uh, considering these are always going to be played at the same time. So that's why I've done that. And as you'll notice here, I've also got the uh, 3D spatializer on, uh, because we want this to sound three dimensional. We want it to be attached to the bullets, and we want that kind of stereo effect uh, to communicate to the player that that bullet is traveling. Uh, cool, so let's have a listen to that in Unity. So what I've done is I've quickly removed the Ellen ranged event, uh, the first event we just listened to, and I've added the bullet event so we can have a listen to it on its own. So if I play it for you, in fact, get that out of the way. If I play it for you now, if you're listening through headphones or speakers uh, or anything stereo, you should hear that bullet fly off to the left. And if I turn around and face the right, you should hear the bullet fly off to the right. And if I play it a few times, should have a slightly different sound every time, which is what we love. Cool, so now let's have a look at how I implemented them into the game. Okay, so like last time, we're using one-shots to trigger these sounds, 
this is because they're just what simple sounds that are triggered once and then they're done with. So we don't need uh, too many instances of these sounds to pile up, which can affect the game's performance. Uh, and it also means for the 3D event, uh, it's nice and easy to code. We don't have to add extra lines to tell uh, Unity or FMOD, uh, no, I suppose Unity, that we are using a 3D event and we need to, you know, tell it where this 3D event will be located within the game so it knows how much like distance attenuation to add to it and stuff like that. So like last time for the uh, hurting sound effect, uh, if I go to the player character script, which I've got open here already, if I, oh, whoops, I'm spoiling it already. If I go up, what I did is I basically did what I did last time. I came down to the part where it was referencing uh, Unity's uh, audio players. Uh, so obviously we want the ranged attack, the gunshot sound. So I came to this part here, double clicked on that, and then I just scrolled. So I highlighted it and highlighted all the other um, in times where this script has referenced the ranged attack audio player. And then I just scroll down until I find it. So if I keep going down, here we are. So this is the uh, spawn bullet uh, function that's being called whenever the player fires the gun. Now all I did is, what I did last time basically, I got rid of the reference uh, to the audio player within Unity and I added a FMOD one shot, uh, like that. So that, that was nice and easy to do. And as you can see, I've quoted the event path uh, like I did last time. And in case you haven't watched the last episode, to do that you just go FMOD, uh, edit settings, oh, not edit settings, sorry, event browser, you find the event you're after, so in my case, it's LM ranged, and you just copy it there by clicking that button. And you go to the code, and you just add it in quotations into the play one shot uh, command. Okay, so to add the second event to the game, we first need to know how the bullets work, essentially, within it. Uh, as we saw in the last script, we have a function that basically uh, spawns the bullets and causes them to fly off whenever we fire the gun. If I quickly uh, play the scene for us now, uh, and quickly open up the Ellen player asset. Or oh, actually, it might even open up itself. No, it didn't. Okay, well, if I open it up, you'll see we've got a load of clones of uh, the bullet prefab, which I'm going to show you in a second. And these are all uh, not enabled, I guess, or disabled, I suppose. <laughs> That's the word. Uh, and basically what happens is whenever the player fires the gun, it will enable a bullet and uh, spawn one and fire it, okay? So what we want to do is basically uh, add a one-shot to the bullet prefab and tell it to play whenever a bullet is enabled. So, if I quickly come out of that and find the bullet prefab, I'm going to go to uh, 2D Game Kit, uh, prefabs, wherever that is, uh, VFX, Ellen, and here we are, here's our bullet. Cool, so, if I quickly open up this script here, uh, bullet, as you'll notice there is already an on enable function already set up, so all I have to do is add a one shot uh, for the event, save it, and we're good to go, essentially. Uh, cool, so the idea is that when we uh, play the game, uh, it's going to load up one of these or, you know, a lot of clones of these prefabs into the game. Then whenever one of them is enabled when the player fires the gun, it will play that one shot for us. However, there is a slight issue with this, which I'm going to quickly demonstrate now for you. So if I quickly play the game, uh, take a listen to what happens as soon as the first frame is run. There we go, what's that about? We just heard a bullet sound, even though there's the, the player doesn't even have the gun yet. So we definitely shouldn't be hearing bullet sounds. Uh, now, I'm not too sure why this happens. The, what I, my theory is that for a split second, or not even a split second, a split frame, when those uh, when this prefab is being loaded and you know there's loads of clones being made in here, uh, they're enabled you know, at the very start as soon as they're in. And then once they're attached to the Ellen game object, they're disabled. Uh, waiting to be used later on when we get the gun. Uh, so obviously that is not ideal. Now I've tried a few workarounds. Uh, one method I tried was creating a new script, uh, which uh, basically used a boolean to detect uh, if this first extra enabling we've got going on as soon as we play the game uh, had happened yet. If it uh, and before you know it happens, we make sure that the one shot isn't played by setting it to false. Then once it has happened, we set it to true, which allows the one shot to be played, and that worked. Uh, but I have another way uh, to fix it, which is a lot simpler, <laughs> which I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, I also tried using the void start function, which we've used a lot of times in the past, uh, but that kind of didn't really work either. It, it, in fact, it did the opposite, I think. No, sorry, it did work. So it didn't. Uh, we didn't hear it as soon as the game loaded, but once we collected the gun, we'd fire it once, and the first bullet would fire and we'd hear it, but the rest wouldn't. So again, that doesn't work. So my uh, workaround was this. If I go to my uh, prefab of the bullet, all I'm going to do is basically 
untick it and disable it so it's not enabled. So now when those clones are loaded into the game, they'll be loaded um, unenabled, essentially. So this function here won't run on that first frame. And then it only will run when we find the gun and start firing. So, so far this has been working for me. If I find any bugs or issues with this, then we will address it in a later uh, video and find another workaround. I mean, there are other options. One other option would be to go back, if I quickly go back to uh, the player character script, which is on our player Ellen. Uh, one method might be to detect if this function is being called. Uh, and then if it is the spawn bullet function, if it is, we then want to play a one shot on the location of the bullet. Uh, one, I, I didn't do this because uh, the function is at the moment protected, meaning that whilst other functions within, or rather whilst other classes within this script can access this function and do what it wants uh, to it, other uh, classes within other scripts cannot. Uh, we could change that, we could make it public and then we could access it. Uh, but for now I'm going to leave it as is, uh, assuming that it needs to be protected, you know, to you know avoid other issues within the game. Uh, cool. So yeah, that was my workaround to that little uh, bug, I suppose you could call it. Uh, so now that that's done, it's all working, let's have a look at how both events sound together. So here we are, let's fire our gun now. There we go. How good does that sound? So we've got the big, boomy, powerful sound from the gun itself firing, and that's always going to be uh, 2D. That's always going to be played uh, within the center of our mix, or the stereo field, rather. And we've also got the uh, second event uh, that's attached to the bullets, uh, and whenever they travel, the sound is going to travel with them, and we get that kind of uh, stereo left-right feel, uh, which is really cool. And like I said, we've also got uh, multiple sounds mixed in there, so it's going to change ever so slightly each time, which gives a nice little, nice little different zappy sound whenever we fire it. Cool, and that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today. Uh, nice and simple stuff, really. Uh, so not only have we added um, some stereo information to our mix by adding uh, two events, we've also got some events that are using multiple audio files to create different sounds every time. Uh, so yeah, nice and simple stuff that hopefully is going to you know, sound really cool when we've got all the other sounds added together. We've got this, you know, really good gun sounds that, that you know, modulates whenever we fire it and has this kind of uh, nice 3D effect to it. Uh, great. Yeah, so <laughs> that's everything for today. Uh, we're going to keep moving on uh, with the player character sounds. Uh, I think next time we might look at some more complicated stuff and might look at some parameters within FMOD with like the footsteps and maybe the player landing as it jumps in the air. Not too sure yet, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, like I said, that's everything I wanted to cover in today's episode. So let me know in the comments if uh, you, I don't know, had any issues maybe, or you enjoyed it, or you know what you'd like to see as we continue. Uh, yeah, and I've been Henry Scott. Thank you very much for watching.